Thank you very much. Uh, first, for Peking University for hosting and arranging this meeting and inviting me to come here this afternoon to talk about a topic that is somewhat new to me, but uh, out of my interest in the history of Chinese books, I've actually begun to look about its history of um, spreading into other countries. And that has gotten me into the question of how Chinese printing and paper technology may have gone westward across Eurasia. Um, now, the history of uh, paper technology, its origins and its uses, is uncommonly well known. That's to say that within the Chinese textual record as well as now archaeological record, there is considerable evidence that it, it has a very ancient history. According to the Hohan Shu, we have a record of this famous eunuch, Zai Lun, being supposedly the man who presented to the, to the emperor evidence of how to make paper in the year 105 AD. But now, thanks to archaeological findings primarily, it's thought to have taken place perhaps two centuries earlier, so basically somewhere between 200 BC and 100 BC. And as a result, we can see that the history of paper making in East Asia goes back at least two millennia, originally for wrapping, and then eventually within the course of the Han Dynasty for writing. Uh, it replaced the bamboo strips and the silk as a, mean, as a, a main means for writing and making books by about 150 AD, so with the end of the Han Dynasty, we can begin to see a profound impact of paper on Chinese culture. And by that I mean effectively everything from the importance of calligraphy as an expressive art to the growth of the te textual record um, of Chinese civilization and also to the length of individual compositions, be they in prose or paper. And so when we get at the, uh, beyond the Han Dynasty, we begin to see by the, by the Tang Dynasty actually that this technology, which was very simple and efficient when it was invented in China, is actually transported westward. And here we have, I've given dates here for the westward transmission across Eurasia of paper technology. The paper itself got there at least two centuries earlier. So for example, when we get to Samarkand, by 751, by Baghdad 794, and Cairo the 9th century, Damascus and Tripoli in the central area of the Middle East in the 10th and 11th century, Tunis and Fez in North Africa by the second half of the 10th century, and then we get to Europe, interestingly, and there's evidence from the mid-13th century of, in Italy, as well as quite likely in Valencia in Spain. I'll come back to Spain later. And so, although we often lack the details of how it was transmitted, who were the transmitted, and the other um, um, aspects of the process of transmission, there is clear textual and archaeological evidence of this progress westward, mainly from Middle East textuals and archaeological sources. So even if the story of the Islamic capture of Chinese woodblock printers at the Battle of the Talis River in 751 can be dismissed as a simplification that was invented later on by Islamic scholars. In fact, it is other evidence holds uh, up to detailed questioning by Middle Eastern scholars of the past two centuries. Namely, the Chinese paper had a very high reputation in the Middle East until recent times, and the Chinese books were certainly known there from at least the time of the Mongol invasion. Now, when we get to the printing technology, it is here where things become much more complicated. We have no such detailed record, be it textual or archaeological, that shows that Chinese printing technology, be that the woodblock from 700 or the movable type from 1040s, was actually transmitted beyond Central Asia. Since China adopted mainly the first of these technologies, that's to say the woodblock, and Europe the second, that's to say movable type with the printing press, and they ended up with distinct technology sets that, were, that had skills that were not mutually transferable, 
It may, may be thought odd that some scholars have sought to uh, find signs of, a, of some sort of direct transmission from East Asia, and particularly China, to the West and to Western Europe. And I would like to say that question or that skepticism is not justified, if only because from roughly the late 1300s and the late 1400s, there began to be evidence of both China and the West had both technologies in use, and that the divergence, the radical divergence in their printing technology really began only from around 1500. So we're dealing with a century or two, or two when Chinese technology theoretically could have gone from east to west. Now, the centuries of speculation in the west about this transmission actually reached its peak when the breakthrough of scholarship came with a very famous study done by Thomas Carter, The Invention of Printing in China. I've given here the, um, the, the title here, The Invention of Printing in China and its Spread Westward, published in 1925. It was rapidly print, translated and printed into Chinese and suddenly and it became a standard text for explaining how this technology had originated in China and spread westward. Subsequent support for this westward transmission came from archaeological finds in Central Asia and where there we saw some movable type imprints uh, in fact, it is now known that the oldest surviving examples of movable type imprints come from the Tongut language, from roughly the early 12th century. And that we have found some movable type um, of Chinese characters and of the script, uh, of the Tongut script, which actually survived and have been dug up in East Asia as further signs of a transmission westward. The, the question, however, is, is there any such sign of textual or um, some form of other sign of evidence of the transmission westward through the Middle East and into Europe, particularly before Gutenberg's invention of movable type printing press in about 1450? And here I have to say the evidence is at best coincidental and actually quite weak. And so for this discussion to move forward, I suggest that instead of bringing up examples of it could be this, it could be that, we actually take that original question, did Chinese technology for printing come out of China westward and enter Europe? And re rephrase the question into three separate questions. When did Europeans first learn of Chinese printing or get hold of Chinese books? The second question is, when did they first learn of the priority of Chinese printing? And thirdly, when did Europeans first learn of Chinese printing technology? And here we begin to get some extremely interesting information. Now first, is Europeans first learned of Chinese printing from medieval travelers. But interesting, the medieval travelers spoke simply of paper money. They never mentioned paper books. And secondly, they never actually described the process or the technology of, make, of printing. They used words that indicate make or stamp. And the Europeans who would have read these eight different descriptions of paper money were mainly interested in the fact that money on paper could have real value, that's you, the same value as if it was in copper or iron or in silver. And so they were fascinated about the economic aspect rather than the techno technological and made no such record. Now, the first books, Chinese books, Chinese printed books, that reached the West, according to the, the textual record, arrived in 1514. That's basically something like 70 years after Gutenberg. And it arrived, interestingly, as a gift from the King of Portugal, whose navigators, having been out in the Middle East, out in East Asia, had gone into a Chinese port and, and acquired there, presumably by purchase, a Chinese book which when they brought it back and gave it to the king of Portugal, he immediately sent it to the pope along with an elephant. And uh, when it, the, the pope got the book, he was more astonished by the book than by the elephant. Uh, 
and immediately put it into his library. But it was knowledge of this spread widely in Europe, and for the first time, people realized there was another civilization that was perhaps as literate and as ancient as theirs. Now, nobody in Europe could read this book. It was basically an exotic an example as if something had come from Mars. But in the same century, several decades later, we have the first written speculation by this Italian scholar, Paolo Giovi, that perhaps, actually, Gutenberg was not the inventor of, of printing as we thought, that effectively it may have come from China as it's having its own invention of printing. Now at this time, there was no real distinction between so-called woodblock or uh, movable type printing. And in fact, later on, we would find no example of textual or material evidence of, of um, a woodblock, a uh, movable type uh, that went west of Central Asia. And so to answer the second question, we can see that it would be 1514 uh, when the, uh, the Westerners first know, knew of Chinese books, and secondly, in 1546, that there was actual speculation that China may have gotten this technology first. And thirdly, as for the technical information about how to do the printing, this is also even more intriguing that the first written record in any language, and it was translated into French in the 17th century, actually is Persian. It survives in writing of a famous uh, Persian scholar who, who had been to China, was interested in Chinese civilization, and actually called printing one of the great wonders of the world in about the year 1300. Unfortunately, most of his compatriots had no such interest. And in fact, what we can see is that in 1294, at roughly the same time he was writing, there was an introduction of, quote unquote, printing into uh, the Middle East, into Persia, by a, a Mongol leader, a Mongol Khan sent out from Beijing. And it was through paper money that it was introduced. The printing of paper money, however, caused so much trouble in the market in Tabriz where it was introduced because of a shortage of copper coinage that effectively the merchants refused to accept and use this, this currency. They closed down the market and the paper money thereafter was associated with total chaos in the economy. It was speculated by Carter that some Genoese or Venetian merchants who were known to go to Tabriz for trading actually um, brought back knowledge of paper money printed and printing off to Europe. But if they did, they would have brought it back as, with a warning note that this can only cause trouble. Now, if you look at the European information about Chinese technology, it is that in 1765, we have a first reasonably detailed description in French, in 1831 in English. And if you wonder why it took so late, perhaps the most surprising evidence that the first description in Chinese of printing technology, how to do it, was appeared only in 1947 which effectively means there was nothing in a book that explained how to do printing. And so that most famous technology book that we have from the late Ming, the, uh, the Tiangong Kai Wu, effectively does not have any description of technology, of the technology or the process of making books. Now, so far, I've talked about woodblocks mainly, and as for movable type, the evidence is even less. There's no information on this technology in the West as Chinese until the 19th century. Now, since the textual and quote-unquote archaeological evidence is so scant for this text, some scholars have looked at the individual books and noticed that, well, they arrange the books similarly, but the differences are just as many, if not more, than the actual similarities. And other scholars have more interestingly looked at the so-called textiles. Here we see that textiles with designs, print, with printed designs, actually appear in Italy in about 1350. That's about a century before Gutenberg. 
In Germany, we get closer to Mainz, about 1,400. Um, the connection, however, is that we have no knowledge that somehow these technologies were transmitted, this is Woodblock, to Gutenberg, of course, who did not adopt Woodblock. He, he, he went out and got movable type. A third interesting type of material evidence are the playing cards. Now, Chinese playing cards, that's to say, to play sort of card games with, were printed in the Tang Dynasty in the 9th century. And they have been discovered in Central Asia. The examples we have from the Middle East, however, are essentially all painted. And we have 70 examples surviving from 15th century Europe of playing cards that were printed, but they have no text. They're just images. And so once again, the evidence here is maybe, maybe, but we don't know. And there's certainly no connection with Mr. Gutenberg or any of his workers in minds. And so to sum up, um, this was to be my original summary, is that I think, unfortunately, the evidence is more scarce than I had originally thought for the transmission of Chinese woodblock and particularly movable type off to Europe. And if we have to say, how can we move on to this? I think the information from the Middle East will be crucial, partly to explain why it didn't go westward to Europe, and partly because we may find evidence there. First, think of the fact that censorship was practiced widely once they knew of Gutenberg and his books from 1485 up to the 19th century. And there's no reason to doubt that these governments in the Middle East wouldn't also have had censorship of books if they had known about Chinese printing technology. And second, there was so little demand for printed books in the Middle East, particularly in Arabic, that effectively, even if they had known of it, they would have regarded it as irrelevant to their culture. Uh, the sole examples we have of any pre-1700 printing in the Middle East are not books, but just printed sheets, which are more sort of stamped sheets. Stamped sheets, uh, small in scale, printed and um, produced for illiterate people, um, prayers to protect them when they travel, particularly as pilgrims. And these printed sheets uh, known to survive in the outskirts of Cai they, they were excavated in the end of the 19th century by Austrian archaeologists in 1894. And about 77 of them survive in different uh, museums in the world. And so the evidence uh, that we've reviewed, the textual, archaeological, and material overall is not for a strong case anywhere near as strong as that for paper transmission, and that if we are to look for any of this further information, I suspect it will have to come from Middle Eastern archaeology. Now, this was the way I was going to end this story, but then, this talk, but then shortly before I got on the airplane, I learned of an article done by a scholar in the, um, of Middle Eastern, sorry, Middle Eastern history um, who effectively shows that recently people have learned of two fragments of printed Arabic amulets that were just survived. One of them is about this sort of size, and the one is even smaller fragment, one surviving in a collection in Toronto, and the other one in the hands of a private American collector. These two examples have been, it is thought now, assessed to have come from an excavation in Spain, in Spain, dating from around 1,000. But were they printed in Spain? It's not clear. Could they have come from the Middle East? And the answer is yes, because there was regular um, trade going between the, Egypt and, and Spain when Spain was under Islamic rule. And so I think we, I have to end up by saying yes, there is conceivably some evidence that woodblock printing ended up in southwest Europe before Gutenberg, but it was ignored possibly because it was used for popular sheets, not books, and certainly nothing to do with the Bible. And so on that note, I should end this talk. So thank you.